Hello everyone, Dave Landry here from DaveLandry.com. Today we're going to talk about my favorite pattern for getting aboard existing trends. I'm also going to talk a little bit about my approach to markets in general, which includes money management and trading psychology. And that's because setups do not exist in a vacuum. Now before we do that, I want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule to watch this video. So thank you very much. There's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading or as I often sum it up, all predictions are about the future, and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. Now, I'm going to throw a lot of information out at you today, but keep in mind, this is not one and done. You can go to DaveLander.com slash TKO for a plethora of information on money management, trading psychology. I have some free reports there. You'll also have links to over 1,700 videos and 500 posts. And if you do have questions, you can always call me or email me at Dave at DaveLander.com. Now, I'm not going to read you this bio. You can download that off your website. But for those of you who don't know me, I just want to touch upon a few things. I've been trading for a very long time. During that period of time, I've worked with hedge funds and thousands of individual traders. I've also written three books on trading, which have been published in seven languages total. And that has allowed me to travel the world, speaking a good, wo speak a good word, on technical analysis. And that's been a lot of fun. Now, a few words about my approach. My approach is a conceptually correct methodology based on market psychology. In other words, I'm using technical analysis to read the emotions of the market. It's repeatable. Repeatability is a big thing. There might be some great traders out there that are doing great things, but trying to follow them sometimes can be very difficult. For instance, let's say a day trader is making hundreds of trades a day and you try to follow him. He might be getting out right when you're trying to get into a position or somebody might be following something more arcane and or some sort of proprietary type of indicator which makes it very difficult for you to repeat their performance with everything I do it is repeatable it's simple straightforward it does take a little experience but you should be able you should be able to repeat it in time now money management is crucial and cannot be separated from the methodology I often talk about this quite often. In fact, you'll probably hear me talk about money management more than any other traders out there. And it just it's very crucial. Without a money management plan, you're doomed from the start. Also, trading psychology is vitally important. The best methodology in the world is useless if you don't have the proper mindset to follow it. So developing that proper mindset and having that proper mentality is key. Now, keep in mind, it's not my way or a highway. It's just the best thing that I've found after many years of searching. I think we all go on this holy grail hunt where we look for the perfect indicator or perfect indicators. And then we reach a point one day, at least for me, I reach an epiphany where I realize there is no holy grail and that simpler is better. And you peel away all those indicators, just go back to the blank chart. In fact, other than the occasional moving average, I don't use any indicators whatsoever. Now let's talk a little bit about the psychology of the market and your own psychology. Yogi Berra once said, that if the world were perfect, it wouldn't be. If you took the word world out and put markets in there, I think it pretty much sums it up. The market is composed of a bunch of emotional beings. And one of those beings, of course, is you. So if you can read the mind of the market, read the emotions of the market while embracing your own, you'll do just fine. And the way you do that is be cognizant of your own emotions and own feelings in trading and in life in general. And that's going to help, help you wrap your head around the emotional nature of yourself and the market itself. Remember, you're one of those emotional beings there. Also, it's been proven that you cannot make any decisions without emotions and stress involved. And that research is based on Damasio and Scholl. So we could use this emotional nature of the markets to our advantage, provided, of course, we're willing to embrace our own emotions. Now, before we get into the setup, the question is, should you trade for short-term or longer-term gains? And the short answer to that is, uh, yes, absolutely. When you're predicting a market, it's akin to predicting the weather. Only short-term forecasts are viable. So if I look out the window and see it's cloudy and thundering, I know it's likely going to rain fairly soon. But I don't know if it's going to be raining this time next week, a month from now, or a year from now. So with predicting the market, it's kind of the same thing. If you have a setup, you know you have a fairly good chance that the market will move over a certain period of time, but you don't know how long it's going to continue to move in your favor. Now, short-term trading has the advantage of 
keeping your risk small. And again, you can only predict the short term. Unfortunately, big moves take time to develop. And the other, unfortunately, is that bad things can still happen over a short period of time. So if you're only making a small amount of money on each or any given trade, I should say, then if you get hit really hard, which sooner or later will likely happen, it takes a long time to make that up. So the real money is in the longer term trading. Unfortunately, that's where the risk is. And again, they're hard to predict. So how do you solve for this dilemma? Well, you trade for a short term gain. In fact, I'm slotted as a swing trader, but I will stick with positions as long as they move in my favor. And I kind of like to see it as changing hats from a trader to a trend follower. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So if you take a look at this trade here, we got a fairly short term profit out fairly quickly. It took a little while, but we did. We were able to make a short term profit. And then once we took that profit off, we were able to trail a stop for a long, long time. This is the ultimate goal on every trade to get in for a swing trade, hopefully something that happens very quickly and then stick around longer term in case a longer term trend develops. Now, if you ask me to sum up my methodology for existing trends i would say that i trade reversion to the mean in the direction of the trend and that's a fancy way of saying that i trade pullbacks so i'm looking for a market to be first in a very strong and obvious trend i'm looking for that market to pull back and then i'm looking to play that bounce from oversold back up to overbought now if you're picking your spots carefully that move is fairly certain obviously nothing is guaranteed in markets but if the market is cooperating the sector's cooperating, other stocks within the sector are doing well, then your chances are pretty good to capture that swing trade move out. Unfortunately, we don't know what's going to happen longer term. Now, when we get into pullback trade, we look to take partial profits as that market moves in our favor because we don't know how long that market's move is going to last. So we take partial profits and then we bring our stop up to break even. And doing this, barring overnight gaps, the worst thing can happen is we scratch out on the remainder of the trade. It's what I call better than the poke in the eye. You're not going to get rich with this type of trade because you're only making a little amount. And it has the problems I talked about earlier. We're just making a small amount each trade. But at least you make something on the trade. And a lot of times that longer term trend does not ensue. But if it does, we're still in the market via a trailing stop. And again, that's where the money is. And that's where it really pays off. So, so I like to see it as changing hats from trader over to trend follower. Now, here's the moment you've been waiting for. Let's talk about my favorite pattern for getting aboard established trends. And that pattern will be the trend knockout or TKO for short. Now, here are the rules. It'll make a lot more sense once I do a few walkthroughs. But the market should be in a very strong trend. Persistent trends, ideally, are our best. And then the market should have a sharp sell-off. We're looking to get long above the high of that bar with a few caveats we'll talk about in one minute. And then if the bar is very wide, we're looking to get, uh, we're looking to place a stop that is below the low of the bar. So let's break it down. First of all, we want to market in a very, very strong uptrend. This trend should be obvious. You should be able to draw a big arrow on the chart. In fact, I'm known for drawing these big blue arrows on the chart. And that all came from back in the late 90s. I'm, I'm dating myself. When I was writing for a popular website and I began drawing these big blue arrows on the chart. And they're blue only because... My paint shop program defaulted to blue. And once you identify that strong trend, and again, it should be obvious, you're looking for a very sharp sell-off. This sell-off should be meaningful. If you were actually long this market and got knocked out long, at least as a longer-term trend follower, and you got knocked out, then the chances are that move is significant. The other thing you could do is imagine if you were long this market trying to hold onto a longer-term trend, where would your stop be? And if that stop would have gotten taken out, then obviously the market move down the wide range bar down is significant now we look to enter above the high with the caveat of if the close is fairly close to that entry you want to give it a little bit of wiggle room to keep from being triggered in on noise alone now once you do get triggered you put a stop below the low provided of course the bar is fairly wide to make sure you give it enough room uh, if the bar is kind of medium in size and ideally you want a wide range bar down a significant knockout but if it is a little bit more medium in range, you might want to give it a little extra run below the low for your stop. So let's talk about the psychology behind this pattern. As I said earlier, everything to do has a psychological basis. So with the TKO, a lot of times you have the Johnny come lately who are buying late into the trend. These tend to be the worst traders. They're buying as the market is making new highs. You just kind of give up, throw in a towel, and buy whatever the cost. Buy at whatever the cost. 
when the market begins to sell off, they're quick to dump their positions. So they're very fickle type of traders. And a lot of times that selling can be get more selling and knock even more traders out. So that's the theory behind the trend knockout. So these Johnny come lately they're buying near the high. Again, the market begins to sell off. They quickly dump their position and then that tends to exacerbate the sell off. Now, if the market goes, turns around and goes right back up, those traders that were knocked out must put up or shut up. They're forced to buy back in or be left behind. Now, in some cases, they'll buy back in at even higher levels, and that helps the stock to go parabolic. So we're taking advantage of the predicament of these traders. And they're also, it's also knocking out some traders, so we know we don't have to worry about those traders dumping their position on us. Now, shorts in general tend to be egotistical. They tend to like to pick tops for some reason. I'm not sure why that is, but they often confuse the issue with facts. A lot of times a stock might have very poor fundamentals and they think, well, this stock does not deserve this valuation. And it might not, but if the stock is going higher, what is, is. If it's going higher, it's going higher. But they tend to jump on these stocks, especially if they begin to weaken a little bit at these new highs. So they smell the blood, they begin to pounce. And what happens is if the market turns around after the big knockout move, then they're forced to cover. So their short covering can help to propel your position higher too. So as you can see, there's a psychological basis behind the pattern. Now let's look at some real world TKOs. In this particular case, you can see that this stock is in a very strong trend. It's also in a very persistent trend. Notice that it tends to go up day after day after day. Mathematically, that's equivalent to linear regression, but I just like to draw a line through as many parts as possible and keep it simple. And then you can see we have a nice knockout move. Now, in this particular example, you can see that the trend is, it was in kind of a gradual trend, but then it began to accelerate higher in a very persistent way. And that's the best combination for this particular setup. If you zoom the bar in a little bit, you can see that that wide range bar down was very significant. Now, occasionally you have a stock set up in a bit of a textbook type of fashion. And this is what I call a textbook TKO. When this happens, you're able to get it at a precise point, place a stop at a precise point once triggered, and then that tells you where your initial profit target will be. Let's take a look at this. So if you have a wide range bar down, in other words, a TKO, and it closes poorly in a very solid trend, if that stock goes all the way back up and triggers, you know there's a good chance that that actual trend is resuming. So once you do get triggered in, you can put a stop in right below the low because it shouldn't turn all the way back around and go all the way back down and hit the stop. And if it does, obviously you have to get out of the way. So if you measure from your entry to your stop, that gets, gives you not only your initial risk, but your initial profit target. So you add that to your entry and that becomes your profit target, your initial profit target, okay? I have initial italicized because hopefully we hope to hold on to a position for a long, long time and get a lot more out than just that swing trade. So here you have the methodology and the money management all rolled into one little simple pattern. All that's left is your mind. In other words, your trading psych, having the proper mentality, having the proper trading psychology to follow the plan. Now, here's another great thing about the TKO. Sometimes the market begins to implode, and then it keeps imploding. But the great thing is they never trigger. So no trigger, no trade. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Here we have a stock. Had a very nice knockout move. In fact, it's pretty much a textbook TKO, an absolute beautiful setup. So in this particular case, we look to buy above the high. But look what happens the next day. The stock begins to implode, or continues to implode, I should say. So no trigger, no trade. So sometimes a TKO can be the start of something much bigger. And when it is, you just stay out of the way. Remember, we're not trying to buy a stock at a bargain. We're not trying to catch that falling knife. We're waiting for those traders to be knocked out and for the stock to re reverse and go back on to trigger and then hopefully beyond. Now, the best combination is when you have acceleration of trend, persistency, and then a very nice wide knockout bar. So when you see all these three things, that's the best patterns to trade. Now, remember, when you're trading a TKO, it must be in a strong trend. The trend should be obvious. You should be able to draw a big blue arrow on the chart in the direction of the trend. And also, never forget about the net net. Make sure the market is significantly higher than it was 
previously. So look at the close today and then look back a few weeks in a few months even to see that that move higher is very significant. You also want to make sure the knockout move is meaningful. A litmus test for that is if you're actually long the market as a longer term trade or if it's something that is worked into a longer term trade, something that's morphed into a longer term trade as we discussed earlier, and it knocks you out, then the chances are that knockout move is significant because you know for a fact that traders have been knocked out of the market. So make sure that that move down is on a very wide range bar relative to the stock. Again, this is not one and done. If you want more information, go to DaveLander.com slash TKO. Also, for making it all the way through this video, if you go there as a thank you, there's going to be a gift certificate for DaveLander.com. So check that out. Any questions, shoot me an email at DaveLander.com. Thanks again for listening. And may the trend be with you.